Matt Wolf said this in a Twitter space recently. You know, I still think that like anything AI generated, most of the content's pretty bad. And I've I've tried to use ChatGPT where I will feed it a bunch of my own content and then say, try to write it like me. And it still comes out nothing like the way I would sound. It would try to add some like extra words in there where it would, it would add some stuff like, what's up folks? Here's what I got for you today. And I agree with him. No matter how much I've reworked my prompts to produce tweets and Twitter threads, the results were robotic, just not human, until I discovered a trick. A trick so simple that I was utterly amazed that no one was talking about it, and it has nothing to do with giving ChatGPT a sample of your writing. Hey there, it is I versus AI. This trick has three part one, the show, two, the tell, and three, the skew. Stick around until the end, and I will show you how just one word can make your entire prompt, no matter how craftily constructed, completely useless. The prompt is simple, but the key is the two parts of the prompt. One, the show, and two, the tell. Most prompts I see are tell only. Those act like a therapist or act like a lawyer. But the key is to show the model, literally. Just to give it an example of exactly what you want, because according to Andre Carpathy of OpenAI, large language models do not want to make answers to your questions. Uh, they just want to complete documents. <laughs> In other words, they're mimicry machines. If you do not give the model a good show, it will pull from its training data, which is derived from the internet, and it's pretty generic. Let's break this prompt down. Like all of the prompts I show, this prompt is available in the description and pinned comment below so you can drop it right into your chat GPT. I attended a Twitter space recently, and it was really fun, so I want to have this prompt create a tweet about that. The first part is the context. This is the topic. This is what I want the tweet to be about. The second is the writing sample. This is where the first part of the trick lies. Even though it says writing sample, you are not going to write your context. You're going to speak it. Think about it. Language began with speech. How we write is not how we truly communicate. By speaking our context into our prompts, well, let me show you. This is a sample of my writing from a Reddit post I made recently. I'm going to drop it in. And then with the last part of the prompt, the tell, the prompt is complete. I'm going to copy it all and drop it into chat GPT-4. Let's run it. And this is what I get. Last chat space was a gold mine of info. I'm coming back for more. You'll see what these AI chat sessions nail and where they drop the ball, much like my Python programming skills. So the first problem here is you can see that the writing sample, which mentions Python, because I just grabbed this from that Reddit post, is not relevant to the context. The AI is basically ignoring my instruction and letting the writing sample bleed into the output. But also, this whole way of speaking just doesn't sound like me. Python isn't my strong suit, but these AI chat spaces, they've got it all. You bet I'll be back. And maybe, just like with Code Interpreter's system prompt, you'll see the good, the bad, and the unexpected. If I happen to have been born in a manor around 1865 and just happened to stumble upon Twitter, this might be how I'd tweet. But otherwise, it just sounds fake. If I saw this on Twitter, I would just roll my eyes and keep on scrolling. But what happens when we speak our context in? In this case, I'm going to talk to ChatGPT with an extension called Talk to ChatGPT. This is a Chrome extension. It works really well. Over here, you just click the Start button, and I'm going to mute the mic so all that I say doesn't end up here in the context. You'll know you're recording when you hear that little sound. Before you get started, make some changes here in the settings. Specifically, keep listening when pause. You want to make sure that that is checked. And one of the coolest things about Talk to ChatGPT is that it allows ChatGPT to respond back to you with a voice. You can use the Google Voice here. You can even use 11 Labs text-to-speech, 
which means that you can use voices that sound very natural or even a voice that sounds like something custom that you've created. Just click this box here, which will give you settings, which will allow you to enter in your 11 Labs API key. And even though 11 Labs voices sound a lot better than the stock Google Voice, it's not free. So just keep that in mind. Click Save and I'm ready to go. The trick to understand when speaking your context is that we all speak in different ways depending on the situation. In other words, the context. When you're talking to a friend, you're going to speak a lot differently than when you're talking at work. So in my case, I want to write a tweet about the Twitter Spaces event that I attended, and I want that tweet to sound relaxed and natural. We all know that ChatGPT sucks at sounding relaxed or natural. So no matter how much you tell it to act like a human, it's just gonna sound like an AI acting like a bad 90s sitcom character. To sound conversational, you need to have a conversation. You wanna talk into ChatGPT as if you're talking to a friend about the experience, in this case, that I wanna tweet about. But if you wanted to use ChatGPT to create a cover letter, you would want to sound professional. In that case, you would just answer some pretend interview questions. And if you didn't have any, simply ask ChatGPT to come up with some. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, this is great, but I don't have a microphone. That's all right. I've got you covered. This is Wobike. It allows you to turn your phone into a microphone for your computer, and it's free. All you need to do is install the app onto your phone and then you install a corresponding app onto your desktop. And with that, you can simply connect through USB or Wi-Fi. It's very easy to set up and you'll be able to talk directly into ChatGPT. It works well. I've tried it. And in fact, one of the things I love to do is when I'm outside of my office, I simply turn on my phone, use it as a microphone, stream my desktop to my phone, and then I can work with ChatGPT with talking to it and it responding back to me in voice. So give it a try. You don't need to do many lines. Just seven or ten is fine. In this case, I'm going to pretend to talk to someone who has just asked me, a friend of mine, how my day is going. And I'll tell them about this Twitter space. Hi, how are you? Oh, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. I attended this AI space. It was wonderful. I got to hear a lot of perspectives from people who are in love with AI as much as I am and who have YouTube channels or who are working in the space. I even got a chance to talk myself and share about my channel and some of the things that I'm doing uh, with AI and my content creation machine and all kinds of cool things. It was really fun to be able to talk to people, make connections one-on-one, -on -one, do some networking, and I even got to talk to some people directly. So it was really enjoyable. I had a great time. How was your day? And that's really it. One more tip. As you can see, whatever you say on the microphone shows up right here in the chat box. So it's a good idea to do this in a place where you are alone. First, because, well, it's awkward to talk into a microphone and have a pretend conversation or a pretend interview. But also, if you have a television or someone talking in the next room, the mic may be sensitive enough to pick up on it and it'll show up here in your context. So do it by yourself. Now I'm going to copy all of this text and I'm going to toss it into the prompt. It doesn't matter that the text is not capitalized or punctuated. It makes no difference at all. Let's replace the writing sample with this new spoken text and see what we get. The AI chat room was a blast. So much to learn. So many like-minded AI enthusiasts. Can't wait for the next one. Just had a ball at this AI space. Got to share about my work, made some cool friends and learned a lot too. Definitely doing this again. Loved every bit of the last AI chat. So much passion and insight all around. And I even got to put forward my own ideas. Looking forward to the next one. That sounds so much more real and natural. I learned this trick because I've been working on this content creation system and I wanted to use my YouTube transcripts to help me in my prompts. So when I would put my transcript in, which is of me speaking, it would give me so much more natural speech than anything that I could do, no matter how many writing samples that I gave the model. So give it a try and let me know how it works for you. Now, remember, this is a three-part trick and prompt. And I promise to show you about that one word that changes everything, no matter how carefully constructed your prompts may be. And that word is tweet. If you look through this prompt, you'll notice that though it is designed to produce tweet, it does not say the word tweet or Twitter even once. And that's because of the skew. 
the third part of this trick. Let me show you. I'm going to change the word statement here and statements here to tweet and tweets and change the word chat to Twitter space. Now, let's copy that prompt and run it. Whoa, Nelly. Look at all of those hashtags and emojis that ChatGPT just spit up all over the place. Just joined an awesome hashtag AI Twitter space. So enriching. Had a blast at the recent hashtag AI Twitter space. Blown away by the AI chat on Twitter. Not only is ChatGPT now tossing around hashtags and emojis like it's 2017, it is also completely disregarding the writing sample that I have given it. And in fact, it's completely disregarding the tell. All of these tweets are very similar. They have the hashtags with the two emojis at the end, always two, <laughs> never one. And that is because even with a great show and a great tell, the model's training data can be skewed by what it's been trained on. It's been trained on many, many tweets and has brought that down to a median example of what a tweet should be. The minute that you put the word tweet or Twitter into your prompt, it will simply slide into this very formulaic tweet output. And no matter what you do, it's basically impossible to change it. I was so frustrated trying to get the model to stop adding silly hashtags and emojis and changing the tone of my output until I realized this one thing. So skip the word tweet or YouTube script or Anything that basically gives the model an excuse to become very formulaic and save yourself a whole lot of frustration because being frustrated with ChatGPT slows you down. It slowed me down when I was trying to get ChatGPT to help me analyze the data of my YouTube channel to see how I could improve until I wrote my master analytics prompt and that along with one really awesome plugin is part of why I'm finally finding success on YouTube. I show you how to get a handle on your analytics, Twitter or YouTube with this video on screen right now.